Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay. Fine. Um, I have ADHD. I believe I do. I, th I got tested like 10, 15 years ago. And I got medication for it. So maybe I don't have ADD. I think I do. I don't know. Let's go. Understanding the scattered brain, ADHD brain. Demystifying Medicine McMaster. It's a tough name to... Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD, is commonly misunderstood mental condition. This video discusses what ADHD is and the sy symptoms thereof. Okay, let's go. Mental health disorders can impact an individual's daily life. Today, we will be talking about the ADHD brain. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is a commonly misunderstood- My God, this is going too slow. I need to go uh, 1.25 mental health condition, and one that we will be discussing today. ADHD is recognized in the DSM Manual for Mental Health Conditions. It is characterized as a neurodevelopmental disorder that affects the executive functioning of the brain. Research suggests that genetics could play a role in contributing to ADHD, with statistics saying that 75% of children with ADHD have a relative with the disorder. There are two types of ADHD, inattentive, also called attention deficit disorder, and hyperactive, or ADHD. Depending on the type, the symptoms can differ. Individuals who have the hyperactive or ADHD, depending on. I'll put it to normal speed, just, you know. The type, the symptoms can differ. Individuals who have the inattentive type of ADHD can experience symptoms such as not paying close attention to details or making careless mistakes, trouble focusing on tasks or conversations, distraction while listening, not following instructions, and not completing tasks. Individuals who have the hyperactive or impulsive type of ADHD can experience symptoms such as fidgeting, tapping hands or feet, not being able to stay seated, and talking too much. Hmm. When I'm not on my Adderall, I'd say I am this type, and when I'm on my Adderall, I'd say I'm this type. These symptoms present themselves equally in males and females, and ADHD is not a sex-specific disorder. However, females are underdiagnosed and males are overdiagnosed with ADHD. I wonder why. In fact, Clinic-based studies by the CDC have reported a male-to-female ratio of about 2 to 1 in ADHD diagnoses, specifically in children that are aged 5 to 17 years old. You have perhaps... Is there like an evolutionary reason for that, or is it just a stigma? I've heard that ADHD is a male disorder. This is definitely a myth. There is a notion that hyperactivity is a male characteristic, and as a result, males are often overdiagnosed. Females are misdiagnosed with emotionally based psychiatric illnesses such as anxiety and mood disorders. As of right now, diagnosis of ADHD occurs through a comprehensive evaluation by a clinician who could be a pediatrician, psychologist, or a psychiatrist. Yeah, I remember taking a test. It, it was it's kind of fun. There are two routes of treatment for ADHD. The first route is medication. The two medications used to treat ADHD Ritalin, are Adderall. methylphenidate and amphetamine. Both I have taken I have taken amphetamine salts and um, I transferred over to uh, methylphenidate HCL 20 milligram and I've been on that for about six years. But I've been on one or I've been on either one of these consistently nonstop for about. 13 years, 12 years. Medications target the prefrontal cortex of the brain, which is responsible for executive functions. Hormones like dopamine and norepinephrine travel across the neuron through the synaptic cleft. The longer a hormone stays in the synaptic cleft, the longer its effects are. Dopamine helps with concentration. Under normal conditions, dopamine stays in the synaptic cleft for long enough to allow a person to concentrate. What? The synaptic cleft, the longer its effects are. Executive functions. Hormones like dopamine for ADHD are methylphenidate and amphetamine. Yeah, I know. Both medications target the prefrontal cortex of the brain, which is responsible for executive functions. 
Hormones like dopamine and norepinephrine travel across the neuron through the synaptic cleft. The longer a hormone stays in the synaptic cleft, the longer its effects are. Dopamine helps with concentration. Under normal conditions, dopamine stays in the synaptic cleft for long enough to allow a person to concentrate. However, in individuals with ADHD, hormones like dopamine don't stay in the synaptic cleft for a long period. Okay, so it's like, um, uh, I don't want to edit out. Come on, go quickly, please. It's going, don't worry. Okay. Hold on, uh, uh, you can't see me. Hold on. So, so basically it means like, um, oh shoot. So it's like, So it's like the more that the things are able to kind of stay in this area, the more you can stay concentrated. But the fat, like the, if they just like go in and go right through, right through, right through, then you can't pay attention as much, I think. Is that what that means? Period of time making it hard for them to concentrate. Methylphenidate and amphetamine work by inhibiting the reuptake of these hormones from the synaptic cleft by blocking their receptors so that they can stay there for longer, thereby helping with ADHD symptoms, specifically attention and thinking. Recent research, like the one conducted by Hodgkins and Carly- What happens if you just block them forever? Are you just always concentrated? <laughs> Sorry. And thinking. Recent research, like the one conducted by Hodgkins and colleagues in 2012, concluded that both medications are equally as effective as each other, and they are prescribed on an individual basis. Uh, I've I have taken both of them for many years each, so I think I can I, I can be a good. So the difference I see between methylphenidate and amphetamine is um, so methylphenidate I see as Ritalin, amphetamine I see as Adderall. Okay. Adderall seems to be less, like, less kind of powerful, but longer lasting. And methylphenidate is more powerful, but it's kind of shorter bursts. So if you want to get, you know, you have, I guess it depends on what the person who has ADHD needs that medication for is going to determine which, what they, which one they want. There are, there are what's called extended release and instant release for both methylphenidate and amphetamine. I think there's kind of self-explanatory. The extended release ones are in capsules that are designed to release the medication throughout the day. And the instant release is tablets that dissolve much faster, right? And the issue, there are pros and cons to both, in my opinion. But overall, I still don't know which one I prefer. Um, the, the, the pro to methylphenidate, the Ritalin, is that if you have a job to do and you you're can't pay attention and you need to get something done, it's the go-to, right? It, it'll help you with that. But if you have like an eight-hour workday or nine-hour workday or whatever, then I would go more for the uh, amphetamine if you have ADHD. So I see methylphenidate as a kind of more powerful, shorter-lasting, even with the extended release compared to the amphetamine and vice versa for the uh, amphetamine, which is Adderall. In addition to medication, psychotherapy is considered to be another route for treatment. Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, and behavioral therapy are two areas of psychotherapy that can help improve behavior, self-control, and self-esteem in ADHD patients. Psychotherapy sessions focus on three core areas, including organization and planning, distractibility, and cognitive restructuring. Recent research is looking at how video games could help with ADHD symptoms in children. A proof of concept study was conducted by Davis and colleagues at the Duke University School of Medicine. Wait, I want to say something before. Psychotherapy sessions focus on three core areas, including organization and planning, distractibility, and cognitive restructuring. The problem is that I, um, so, uh, I, I, it's best, I think, to talk. Don't, don't worry, this could absolutely help out. And um, I saw, you know, I've, I've been a therapist, but only a, 
only for kind of a short time for ADHD and a few other times more so for like depression and stuff like that. But it's, it's one of the most frustrating things when trying to figure out a solution when you believe you have ADHD is that you, you want to know like what things normal people experiencing and I'm just attributing to the ADHD and making it an excuse. And so I think it's really helpful if you are, if you have ADHD or you think you do and it's, it's not, and it's having, it's disrupting your daily life, which is where it becomes a problem. I think it helps to talk to someone who has it and has been through it so that they can tell you, yeah, yeah, I have that. And like, uh, no, I don't feel so much that way, which means that's probably not con a factor contributed by the ADHD. So if you do have it and having trouble, yeah, this could help. Medication definitely helped me. Um, it changed my life. I was a CD student in freshman year of high school, sophomore, junior year, was probably my worst year of grades I've ever gotten. I had like a 1-7 in junior year in high school. I just like didn't go to school or whatever. And after I got my medication, I it made the world of a difference. Like it, it was such a big um, help for me. So if you have trouble with this, I would consider medication. Recent research is looking at how video games could help with ADHD symptoms in children. A proof of concept study was conducted by Davis and colleagues at the Duke University School of Medicine. A video game called Project Evo was developed with high quality graphics and reward loops designed to be engaging for children and to address the underlying areas of neurocognitive functioning that are impacted in ADHD. The results showed that 84% of treatment sessions were completed and that the intervention was appealing and well accepted. Significant improvements were found in the computerized attention task for the ADHD group and highly ADHD impaired severity subgroup. Improvements were also found in spatial working memory for the ADHD group and the highly impaired ADHD high severity subgroup, while there was no change for the non-ADHD group. The findings from this study hold promise that this treatment could help children with ADHD, and it is currently under review by the FDA. Several resources are- If your kid is really young and you think he has ADHD, I'm not a parent, I don't have kids, you know, do what you think is best, but I don't think it's, I, I don't think it's good to be when you're really young, like below eighth grade or maybe below seventh grade. I'd say like under 10 years old, I don't think medication is a good idea. It helped me a lot, but I started it when I was 16 or 17, when I clearly had a problem. And so I wouldn't want to mess up someone who might just be going through a phase they can grow out of with medication, mess it up. I'd see how they kind of turn out by uh, the grades that really matter, you know, or the, by the age that starts to get serious in terms of it's important to really do well in school. Does that also make sense? Also exists to help those experiencing symptoms of ADHD. McMaster University has resources like the Student Accessibility Services, or SAS, and ADHD focus groups that individuals can participate in. Other general resources are children and adults with a Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, Attitude, Totally ADD, How to ADHD, and the National Resource Center on ADHD which also operates a call center that has trained staff to answer questions about ADHD. Everyone should educate themselves about mental health conditions like ADHD and avoid believing common myths. We hope this video clarified what ADHD really is and the struggles that somebody has going through it. Thank you for watching. It was a really nice video. So, I mean, I could talk forever about this, but, um, one, I don't know, I, I don't personally think it's a good idea to medicate someone like under 10 or something like that you know let them grow a bit but uh something for me like for example with mine when it talks about hyperactive versus inattentive i always had a problem growing up in classrooms and this is why i am never really apologetic for pausing i guess i do say sorry a lot but is that there were so many times in a classroom um before I got on medication where I just like, I'm trying to listen 
and then uncontrollably, I don't even remember it, I just snap out after two minutes, and I'm like, oh my god, what did he say? And so, I, one, I was too kind of embarrassed to keep being like, wait, what did you say? Like, raise your hand. And two, you can't ruin the learning experience of everyone else in class by asking a question every 30 seconds, wait, can you repeat that, you know? And so... YouTube has been a big thing for me learning about stuff where I'm in control. I can stop. I can rewind. I can read something three times over. I can watch something three times over to solidify it. And, um, yeah, it's, it's difficult in school um, when, you know, especially in, in large classes where um, you're really just, you're kind of just screwed. Um, if you, everyone daydreams, everyone has trouble at uh, paying attention sometimes. Everyone has, has parts of these problems, right? But it's much stronger in people with, with ADHD. And I think that's important to, for people to know. And, um, I think ADD in some cases has its benefit. I don't know there. Look, this is something that I, you know, I've dealt with. I'm 29 years old, okay? I've been dealing with this well for my whole life, but I've been dealing with treating it since 16 years old, right? So I've lived for 13 years with this. I don't have that many questions. I've kind of adapted. I've gotten my medication. I'm done with my therapy, which helped a lot. And, and so um, I can answer your questions, guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or go on the Discord and you can DM me or ask in main chat or whatever. Really interesting video. And uh, yeah, hope you're all doing well. If not, chin up. You'll be good soon. Don't worry. See you guys. Bye.